Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're going to apologize for not coming in on last week. We actually had to go on a mini vacation, had to take a road trip somewhere. So when we got back in town, just like Kimmy has that friend, Patricia, that she's been around for five of, yeah. she knows her. I have friends that know me, too. And they was like, <laughs> Lynette, don't even waste your time. Yeah. It's a bunch of regurgitated halt foolishness that I know that you <laughs> or I didn't have time for. So I'm going to go ahead and save you the headache. Don't even watch. I said appreciate it. And because I love my friends, my friends love me, and we know each other, I didn't watch. But anyway, so we're back this week with the pot calling the kettle black. And we almost missed this episode because... Some yeah. kind of way the recording on our DVR was just all No, it wasn't necessarily the recording on the guy. It was yeah, the guy season was two, episode nine. Yeah. It was like, but they've done that before. So. so I almost missed it. Yeah. So I had to go to my real TV guy, Ashley Miller TV. Right. <laughs> and see if it really came on. And I said, oh, she got a video up. It really came on. Thank you, Ashley, for that. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we picking up, I think it's season three, episode 17. Pick it up from... Two weeks ago, where we had Melody pull up on um, Me um Mel pull up on Martell yes. these days going M's <laughs> at the job site, right? Arguing about the fact that he kind of like intruded on a date that she was on, right? So they're still arguing and they're going back and forth. And I said, first the freaking no, all, I didn't come in here to have this type of foolishness. First thing on the episode, but it didn't last long. I actually thought the police going to be called because they got real loud in that neighborhood. I was like, ain't nobody call the cops? And they already had that, you know, they yeah. had that little piece of paper that said, we filming. Yeah, so yeah. We had might get out. it yeah. over, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they, they had a little pass <laughs> on that one. Because, But if it had happened in, <laughs> in real life, oh, yeah. Cops would have been rolled up real quick. But a couple of things came out of that that kind of like made my antennas, as Micro Minipent would say, my antennas go up. <laughs> One, now first of all, Mel is divorced. She can do and go wherever the buck she pleases. But with that said, why did she go to the restaurant mm -hmm. that her, Martel, and their family mm -hmm. frequented almost every week with a new person? Yeah. If you're trying to start a fresh, a new, yeah, I what the Bible said, don't Except pour new wine into old, old wine skins. skins. Exactly. That to because me they'll like, burst like this right here. It's busting like, up on your face. Right? And that's exactly what had mm -hmm. happened. And then Martel came with the so so I'm gonna do you like you did me all these many times. You know the times that you know you you pulled up <laughs> on me recording me and you know but you did your on stuff social on media. media. But I you know I'm different. I'm gonna do it to your face. Yes I am. And who is he? His ugly self. So, and first of all, that's not none of your business. Not none of your business because she's none of your business no more. The only business y'all have together is them daggone children. Yeah. So you don't need to know who it is. And the, first of all, I don't care if she was at the Publix, Starbucks. Don't pull up on her like, like that no more. Right. She is not your business no more. But yeah, at the same that, time, Mel, don't do stuff that you know you're you know that you're antagonizing her. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna get them going. Yep. So and she love it. And it goes. I back, told you they're it, the same person. Right. And we, and it goes back to like what Marso said the other week. Is that the reason why Mel ain't going crazy like Martel? It's winning. because she's winning, man. And I'm glad she's winning. But at the same time, it's almost like when a dog poops and you try to teach him a lesson, I'm going to keep rubbing Rub it your in nose your face. in it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, at this point, real talk. But at this point, they need to move on and split. Restraining Ma order. Matter of fact, they might need to leave both. One of them need to leave Huntsville. <laughs> if y'all can't coexist together, man. I say restraining order and get somebody to be the middle person. I don't think trade I don't I don't off. think a restraining order will hold Martel back. It's not, but at least we have a paper trail. Because this is right, this is getting disturbing. Yeah. But we didn't stay that long, thank God we didn't. So we see Kimmy and her friend Patricia. So Patricia comes in and she's introduced as a to us as someone that Kimmy knew when she had her son Jalen. Twenty year like, relationship, man. You don't they don't make up like, like that. Hey, no I more. like hearing it like that. Twenty yes. year friends? Oh my god. So she man, was like, yeah. she babysit Jalen while mm -hmm. I worked. I babysit her baby while she worked. So this is somebody that we automatically was like uh -huh. Okay, I want to hear what she has to say because we love Kimmy. Right. So anybody that has longevity with Kimmy, I was like, yeah. let me pay close you know, attention to people. them. Yeah. So one of the things that kind of made my good ear turn to my other ear was when this girl said that she was also friends with Kiowa. Yeah. I need to know 
how did this happen? Like, like, how did this happen? Because if you, if you don't know, Kimmy is from this side. Like, DMV, Baltimore, D.C., Virginia, kind of, this side. We have Maurice and all of them from that side. Alabama, what was it? Um, Michigan? Yeah, yeah. How she how they, know how, Kiowa? Mm-hmm. I'm confused. Somebody <laughs> dropping my DMs. It's not important, but that's the kind of stuff that, that need I need paid to. Yeah, need to connect, make that connect. So... In this conversation, they, you know, they're just talking and reminiscing and talking about, you know, how Kimmy is functioning, being married to a Scott and whatever. And then the conversation came up about Kaiwa throwing that thing out there that Kimmy was the reason that her yeah. and Maurice didn't make it. So Patricia was like, no, that's not it at all. You, he didn't know you when he filed the first time. He didn't know you when he filed the second time. Right. And matter of fact, the second time, the papers were delivered to my house because he had left Michigan, moved to, um, not Miami, Tampa, or some, somewhere in Florida. Yeah. And then he <laughs> ended up in Huntsville, I guess living with her. I said, I, this, <laughs> this is the story I need to yeah. hear. Maurice, <laughs> what is going on? So she was like, so it was delivered to my house and you were nowhere in the picture. So I'm like, hold on now. Yeah. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I want to know one plus one equals two on this one. So Patricia was like, you know what? First of all, I love you. I love me some you, but I also am very fond of Kiowa. So basically she said, I draw a line in the sand when right. it comes to certain mm -hmm. things. I won't speak on certain things. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she she did put that out there, but it's not true. Right. And and, and I like what, that Patricia is able to do that because that takes a level of maturity to be able to divide the lines, mm. to be able to have a friend. <laughs> but she got a messy side too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we all she do. do. We all we all do. Mm. I think we all do have a. We all have a petty but, side. But uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's better to say yeah. a petty side. So yeah, her able to do that with with the smoke that's out here right now. But we still got our eye on you, though, Patricia. Yeah, because I'm yeah. like, I just need to know where the cross up happened. Yeah, like, uh -huh. how, how do you know all, all three of them? Right. As my family would say, how do we know all three of them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um. And she said that Kyle would feel some way about it. Yeah. So. So y'all intimately talk about this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Any hoodles. So. We continued the conversation, and then Patricia was like, you know, I didn't like that your sister, Latisha, in all of this, didn't have your back on nothing. Like, she didn't speak out about any of that. And I was like, I ain't never heard you speak out either, but I don't know you, uh, yeah. so I can't say that you didn't. <laughs> but I ain't, I kind of keep my ear to the streets a little bit. I, I guess she said she's speaking out now. Too late. She got, she got some, she got some air time now so she can speak out. Too late. Anyway, <laughs> so then we get on to my girl Kimmy, which we had said it back then. I was like, Kimmy was being petty, but I got what Kimmy said. I just wouldn't have took it that far. But Kimmy admitted, listen, Tisha didn't have my back because she felt like I didn't have her, her back. back. So it was kind of expected. It was mutual. Yeah, it was expected. She said, you know, that whole thing with her and Mel and her feeling like I didn't have her back, which is funny now that now her and Mel are back talking. And I'm still on an island to myself, make it make sense. But she said, yeah, I, I was being petty about it. Like when she put me in a business group text asking for money and I didn't respond. Yeah, I was I'm used to petty. a phone call. Yeah, yeah, I was being petty about it. And, you know, I, I had my petty moment. I sit in it. I live in it. And let's move on. You can't do nothing but respect it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because yeah, we she, all have. Yeah, because she was like, I'm, I'm insensitive when somebody asks for money over text. I am too, to a certain degree. It depends on what it's for. Not yeah. even that. But you do have to understand that Kimmy well, And is... what I mean by that, if I haven't talked to you in months, don't send me a text asking me for money. Yeah. That. That's... And then you have to also understand, like, we even talk about this too with, like, you know, this younger generation. We act like we're so old, but we're 40s. The younger generation, they don't call you about nothing. Nah, they will literally that. text you and tell you that somebody mm -hmm. in the family died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so... We have to or have post a, it on un, Facebook. Yes, before anybody is yeah. notified, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> like, huh? And then you're working backwards to try mm -hmm. to get the details. I'm like, yeah, he's been dead for two hours. What? what? Yeah, <laughs> you know. And then the family get mad because they posted it. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of that. Like you have to, mm -hmm. you have to kind of take into account 
what generation you're dealing with. How did those people communicate? Like, <clears throat> Kimmy, she's, like, in our age range. Right. We know that for certain things, you call people. Anybody a little younger than that is like a text with there you. There you go. Hey. There you go. Or even I just send you a daggone cash app request. Yeah. Or a link to a GoFundMe. No, talk to me <laughs> because I went out and worked hard for this money. So you needed to have a conversation with me about it. So I get it. So let's move on to Tisha and Marso. I said, Tisha, Lord, the tables don't turn. Yeah. But, did but you ought to know that Marso in his fashion was going to turn them tables. But he almost hemmed himself up. It's yeah, he almost, almost like, did. It's almost like you you try to be petty against somebody else, and, mm -hmm. and the petty said, pow. But so, it kind of did backfire on we're going to talk it about. It did. Yeah. So Tisha comes home right with some Wendy's, and it looked like Marceau was in the kitchen trying to fix up something. I said, what would you in there cooking? Nothing. Nothing. I ain't <laughs> see no steam. <laughs> I ain't see a onion being cut, because you know you got to have an onion there somewhere. But anyway, but anyway. So she comes home, and there's these two people sitting in her living room. First, freak, now, if I come home, there's two people in my living room. I'm not going no further than that front door. Uh -huh. Be like, who, who are who you? Are these, who are these people right here? what do you want? <laughs> first of all, my husband should be sitting there introducing me go, to these go, strangers. Go be, like I, go be like Tyrese. What do you want from, from me? me? Why are you here? <laughs> Did they even have a car in the, in, the garage, um, in the driveway? I don't even know. Yeah, don't surprise me like that, but we know it's off of TV and whatnot. Right. So she comes in and she's like, oh, babe. He was like, I have a surprise for you. So pretty much this, these people are Kirsten and Julian. And they are money editors. So pretty yes. much they're people that can get you together <clears throat> about your money and your communication and your relationship with money and whatever. Yeah, when she, when so they now, said they, they, had, they write for Forbes, because I done wrote a lot, read a lot yeah. of things from Forbes about financial independence. So I now I need to go back and fact check and, to and see, see if they're they, they the ones that wrote it. Or if they ain't lying. Let me stop. Let's see if you're really on there. Was it Forbes with a Z or with a S? Yeah. <laughs> so, they get in there and they sit down and they they were like, you know, they introduced themselves as being married for like six or seven years or whatnot. And Tisha was like, yeah, we've been married for 15 years. Okay. Um. So, then they get to the, um, talking about money and the communication with money mm -hmm. and how... Sometimes a relationship will break down because of the spending habits of meats and whatever. So they got into this big old thing that was really nothing, but it was, like they said, at the end of the day, it was their communication, communication. Yeah. regarding money. So Marceau has this thing with Tisha where he was like, she spends a lot of money, a lot of money. Tisha's thing is... He thinks I'm spending a lot of money because I have the duty of the household maintenance. When I buy, I have to buy for all of these kids, including myself. So when he shops, he's shopping for himself. So his tab looks way different than mine right. because yeah. I have, the balance isn't the same over here and whatnot. But he was like, no, 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 no. She got the wigs and the damn purses. Purse, the makeup. And the makeup is a lot of stuff. So Tisha was like, I admit, I grew up differently than Marcel. And then right. and the couple said the same thing. was like, my the guy said his wife's family. Get ready to get matching Teslas. They get ready to get matching Teslas. On the other hand, he has to help support his mother. Yeah. So he was like, I get it. Like the... The way that we grow up can be very different. He, he used that on the other side of the track word and Tisha kind of said that. She had that trigger like, uh -huh. go ahead and say something. I'll say something wrong if you want, player. Yeah, but <laughs> the crazy thing about it is it's funny to me, but not funny. But we always laugh at uh, Wanda and we call her Guido and she calls everybody else Guido. Guido and all that stuff. But the one thing we can say about Miss Wanda is it seemed like Miss Wanda had a well-oiled machine when it right. came to providing for her family. Because she said they had. And she said they, they had, had. And they had no problem with spending and getting oh, yeah. what they wanted. And, you know, her mother was like, she <clears throat> is still hard working to them. And she said, even to the point where she went to college so that she can still afford the things that she likes to do. Right. Because she's used to buying things and getting things and stuff like that. I said, okay, Miss Wanda. Oh, yeah. I said, that was a different look at her. Yeah. yeah. But then if you look at how Marceau, Maurice, and them grew up, and you yeah. think about those children that had to sleep the on the church pews, yeah. you can get how that has 
how that that framework yeah, that is, yeah that has 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 laid the them, blueprint yeah. for right. how they they are with money because right. guess why I get it because I've got it right I am that person <laughs> yeah because I grew up in a trailer park my mm. mom was addicted to crack like for a lot a lot of my teenage years the household responsibilities was on me right. for me and my brother because she had my brother when I was 11 years old mm. so when I'm 16 years old Right. I have this young child that I'm trying to make sure it gets to daycare mm -hmm. and that one, nobody knows what's going on in my household because right. you don't want anybody coming in and snatching you and putting you in the system. Exactly. So I know how it feels to look and backwards isn't that far away. Right. And Marceau was like, going back to poverty is oh, not oh, an he option. Said, I'm not going back. I'm not, yeah, going, I'm back. not going back. So I get why he's the way he is because right. I'm very militant about yeah. money myself. Mm -hmm. Like, when it comes to a certain amount of money, if there's not a certain amount of money in our savings account at all times, Stanley would tell you. I yeah, get the yeah. sweating. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, hell no. No, no, no. What we got to do, what I got to sell on eBay, <laughs> what I got to do, what I got to flip on the marketplace, because yeah. we can't. I can't go back. Like, I get the... Yeah, uh, the twitch, yeah, yeah, I get the twitching, because no. And, and, like, I told her, and this is, like, this is all brand new and new learning, I said... The thing about it, when you running from poverty and you finally get to a place where you finally have some money and be able to do like you need to do, you so much in work mode because you're so afraid to go back. You don't live. Hmm. And that's like one of our things that we're trying to implement right now is like... Live uh, and work. Live and work because we've paid off our debt. Our debt, so we're in a good place right now. Right. But that fear... <laughs> of spending money. Keep you stacking yeah. and not living. <laughs> yeah, right. And you get afraid because you feel like, okay, if I go out and spend this money on this, what if this happens? Because you know when you're in, private, in poverty, everything seems to happen all at once. You need new tires. You need a new carburetor. The refrigerator <laughs> broke. <Not> a <laughs> the refrigerator broke. The, I mean, everything. You know, the kids need money to go back to school. Christmas is coming up. Thanksgiving. You know, mm -hmm. all the expenses seem like they're coming to you at once. So when you finally get to a place where you finally have something, you still have that same mind frame. So I'm going to have to work. I mean, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I need a computer right now, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Stanley read me the numbers last <laughs> night and I said, no, nah, fuck that computer. <laughs> and he was like, Lene, you use a computer to make money. Like yeah. you're a travel agent. You need this, uh, this Mac book and i'm like hey, fuck that mess so book. yeah if you can identify with that man either smash that like button or, or comment below mm -hmm. like like my wife said she grew up in the trailer park i did we wasn't in the park our trailer, was, park. My, my, my trailer was just parked <laughs> but it just wasn't in the park y'all had land yeah <laughs> we had to rent our land and you know what i'm saying growing up you know it and, and not having a lot of money you wanting stuff you know, for your parents to, to give you, but, you know, they never had the money going to school with, you know, what we used to call hand-me-downs and kids teasing you because you have on fish ears and no name brand shoes. Oh, that's a word I haven't yeah. heard in a long time. Fish ears. Yeah, <laughs> fish ears, you know, being teased. And then when you finally grow up and you get, you know, you get some money and then you end up in a similar struggle and then you finally come out, you like, man... I gotta keep working because I can't. I can't do that no more. I can't go back. I can't do One it. One of the many reasons we haven't built our second house yet, <laughs> because I'm like, we can make mortgage with our eyes closed here. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, we're we're busting out the seams here. Once my mama moved in, we started bursting at the seams. But at the same time, I'm like that 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 new mortgage don't sit well with my yeah. soul. Which well, is gonna be higher than this current mortgage. <laughs> But y'all, we just yeah. been, we just giving y'all some real about us and how right. our relationship was with money. And the same thing actually happened to us that happened to Tisha and Marceau was I am the spender because I see things that need to be done in the household right. and I just do it. Right. Like I don't have a conversation about it. If I see that the <clears> drapes <throat> need to be changed out, if I see that the bedding needs to be changed out, we need new pillows. It's done. I'm not having a conversation about it. But if you look at the tally on my debit card, you're like, God dang, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? Because I have, I, I take, <clears throat> I take the lead in a lot of the household things that need to be replaced and bought. He, on the other hand, he buys for me. Yeah. <laughs> he'll buy for me before he buys for himself. So his tally looks different. Like, and then he'll buy some things for himself. And then he'll have a moment where it's like, Stan, are you going through a midlife crisis? <laughs> What? <laughs> like you're looking about 
Forty nine hundred off for what? Yeah. <laughs> a keyboard? And they, and they have in the past they have created arguments uh, because of that. Yes. But now like now we don't care. Now because we communicate, now we understand how we flow. Yeah. And reality, our expenses go up and down. Mm-hmm. Like so much she spend more than I do, so much she is. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure you got the money to spend. That's the problem. Yeah. That yeah. we ain't sitting there and me be like, oh, yeah, we, we got to eat tuna fish sandwiches yeah. this week. Now, if Marceau said that that uh, uh, Tisha was putting all these purchases on, on credit cards. Then you have a problem. That's where the problem at. No, because we don't believe in that. Right. So, they even had a uh, a time in there where they went upstairs to the room. <laughs> yeah. And I said, listen, Tisha, Like, don't do a comparison. Don't do a comparison. Marceau. <laughs> I'm all for transparency, but Tisha, if y'all, y'all gonna have to scale that room down because my anxiety was going out the roof. I was like, too much shit in one place. <laughs> I ain't mean to cuss, but that's how my anxiety is set up. Too much stuff in one place. It would drive me crazy. We're sitting in my office right now, and we have these lights and cameras and microphone right there. That's too much crowding for yeah, me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't do crowding. Just, I need you to break all I this stuff break down. It down, break, all this stuff down. <laughs> break it down. Because he'll like to leave it up. And I'm working. And I'm like, break Ooh. it down. Because it's, it's starting. But I'm, the, but I'm the same way too. Like if my office start getting crowded, I feel like it blocks my creativity. Because it's a distraction. I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, Tisha, y'all, y'all need to move that. You clear that out. Get them persons in that closet. <laughs> I'm like, That's why you didn't stand a chance in the MRI machine. <laughs> That's a whole other story, y'all. Whole other story. <laughs> yeah. I made it though. Yeah. Barely. But uh yeah, so he she showed him like this is what I got going on. I like purses. I like twelve hundred dollar weeds. I said, <laughs> Ooh, child, but I know I used to sell virgin hair. Mm-hmm. Real virgin hair costs money. Yeah. Getting somebody to custom make you a wig even costs more, even money. More money. Yeah. I used to do them both. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it. Twelve hundred dollars in the grand scheme of things is not a lot of money for a wig. When it replaces you going to the salon. Keyword, replaces. Right. Not both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going to the salon and getting hair. <clears throat> yeah, that's a lot. Um, Marceau, he buys vehicles. Hey, that Benz was nice. It was. Yeah, she was nice. So, even the, the people said, listen, in the grand scheme of things, all them purses, makeup, and how the she the boy, I, I bet you ain't come close Couldn't to that. Couldn't close to this band. So the bands alone, yeah. <laughs> basically, your little petty moment t- just backfired on you, Marceau. But, but that but that was awesome, yeah. Because uh, I always like to celebrate a goal. Marceau said that was my goal to have this call on my 40th, 40th birthday. birthday. So congrats, brother, on reaching your goal because that's big, man. Real fast. Yeah. But so let's get off of them. We talked about them way yeah. the <laughs> Maybe this was a therapy session for us. Right. So... Let's get on to talking about Destiny. Destiny has something called a Beauty and Business Luncheon. And um, she's actually going to take this luncheon type of thing on the road to seven different cities where people have been writing them and asking them questions about how do you do this? How do you do that? And that actually gave me an idea because people keep asking me how to do certain things. And I'm like, I'm about to charge y'all for this. Like all these years of studying to get where I've, I've gotten in certain areas, I'm going to start charging people for Let's go hey, on. Come on, come on back. Look, like real come, talk. Come I feel on like back. It's okay. It's okay. Come uh-huh. on back. <laughs> but anyway, so she's having this and you know, they, they unveiled the um cover. Remember we saw her um taking photos for the be on the cover of um what was it? Hyper? Yeah, yeah Hyper. 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 Yeah. So they unveiled that and whatever. So, you know, she's giving people their flowers throughout the whole thing, shouting out the people that's there. She shouted out nurse Kimmy. Because pretty much she said the reason she's She did hacking, more than shout out. <laughs> she set that thing up. So she said the reason she likes doing things like this is because so many times we don't right. get a seat at, at the, the table. table. Yeah. And then sometimes one or two of us get a seat at the table. But she wanted to create a table where all of us was able to be in one place at one time. Be able to set eyes on each other. Know what each other does. So that when things are starting to move, jump, and whatever, yeah. you can think back and be like, yes, yeah, such and such from da da right. does this. Such and such does that. Yes. So I'm like, I love how she did that. So yeah. you'll be able to make a frame of reference when things happen. Right. My life coach told me that. She was like, Lynette, I go to these events and I just pass out business cards. She Networking, says, man. And That's she said, people would hit me up like, I remember you, you from, from such and such. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but I'm an introvert though. I don't care if people like me. Networking is powerful, though. <laughs> it, I mean, it really is it powerful. It is yeah, powerful, but yeah. I don't put my... 
I say I don't put myself out there like that, but, but I'm do. on YouTube. But yeah, I'm talking to myself, yeah. literally. <laughs> so, you know, it's not an audience of people right there until we upload. <laughs> so it's different. Weird, but it is different. So she, at the end of it, she, you know, she gave out a few prizes and whatever. So one of the prizes that she gave out was a seven night. I said, wait, seven nights? Say, huh? Seven night vacation. And she presented it to Kimmy as like a honeymoon for her and Maurice. So here go Kimmy. She was like, I hope she don't oh, think that, that she coming along on this thing. Because, you know, it's been a whole lot of talking about this threesome with Maurice and Kimmy and Destiny. And now I'm starting to wonder, like, is this a cute little joke? Uh -huh. Or is this like... And this for real, for real. I'm, like, I'm, I'm I'm throwing the nuggets out there. So yeah. if you just want to take this nugget and dip it in some sauce, I'm here for it. Because here's the thing. We can go way away for seven days and ain't nobody got to know. Seven days? Yeah. Man, it'd be a whole lot of nonsense. I mean, that's what R. Kelly said, but... That, no, no, we're not talking about him. That ended him up in jail, so that's not a good <laughs> reference, but nobody ain't got to know we take that seven-day trip. <laughs> Real facts. So, they get to talking, and Destiny comes to the table, so now she is talking to her intimate group of people and whatever. And the whole time I was watching Mel... Yeah, she was disconnected, bro. Disconnected, and she just started shrinking. Like, at the table, it was kind of like... I was like, what's going on with Mel? Because we do know that Mel loves to be the center of attention. And when it comes to everybody else's events, y'all have noticed that, that Mel will make it about her or Martel or both in some kind of way, shape, or form. Right. At some point. <clears throat> look at Kimmy's wedding. Mm -hmm. Look at a whole bunch of skit. She, they, she's going to make it about them some kind of way. Well, come to find out, she was a little taken aback. That Destiny sent out this like sponsored, like a package to people right. to sponsor the event mm -hmm. because she was thanking Tisha for sponsoring with the um, chocolate in a bottle, um, champagne or whatever. So Tisha was like, no problem at all. And Mel was like, if I had got the same package that Stormy got, I would have gladly been a sponsor Possibly. for this event. First of all, why you had to bring Stormy into this? Yeah. <laughs> Why you bring Stormy into this? But but she said this, the reason that she knew about the package was because Stormy was like, yeah, I got this from Destiny. Destiny said, I'm not even trying to be funny. This was a lot. The place, the location changed several times. We just got this location a few days ago. Thinking about sending you a, per, a, a packet was not on my mind. We talk mm -hmm. all the time. So charge it to my head, not my heart. Because I know that you always got me. And she was like, you know, well, at the end of the day, if don't nobody have my friend, I'm going to have my friend. But if somebody else had to pick up the ball and roll with it, that's fine, too. But just know that I'm going to write a check. Just write a check. Just write a check. Yeah, you ain't got to say nothing. Just, <laughs> just yeah. write a check. And then yeah. here go Kimmy, Kimmy. Say, but, <laughs> because then Tisha brought up, and I said, Tisha, wrong timing, baby. But we needed to hear it, but not hear it. Tisha said, well, like, why are we talking about checks? Hey. <laughs> Y'all, I sent out a text. Ready. You hope me ready. And the only people that responded to my text was y'all two, and I ain't getting no te no uh, money from now one of y'all. <laughs> so we gonna talk about money. Let's talk about money in full. So Mel was like, I know she ain't calling me out <laughs> on the on the carpet in front of all these people, but at the same time, I'm not mad at it because I do it too. I do it too, and I would have didn't be like, what's going on with the check or whatever. So we have Kimmy adding more salt to the wound. It was like, hmm, but did you get our check though? <laughs> so she was like, yeah, we got it, but it was late. So Kimmy was like, so what would you rather get? A no response to a text message and a check? Or response to a text check message and no, and and no, no check. check. <laughs> I said, that's a good kind of analogy. But Tisha said both. I would have liked yeah. both. But yeah, yeah, Kimmy, you should have responded to the text. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> after a while, Tisha ended up pulling Tiffany to the side, which was kind of awkward. She was like, Tiffany, would you like to go get some more champagne? Tiffany was looking like, what the hell like, I do? Uh -huh. I'm fine sitting at this table, yeah. For once, Tiffany did not open her mouth. Oh, she know the repercussions of it now. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so, pulled her to the side, and then Tisha gets to talking to Tiffany. It was like, you know, what I haven't learned is a lot about you. Like, I hear people say, Tiffany, and the only thing I know about you, Tiffany, is that you're divorced. You're like, you've been married before you divorced, you remarried. I don't know anything about you. You keep saying all these things about being transparent, but who are you? Like, what's your story? You know, what, what, what happened in your previous marriage? Like, what caused all of that? Listen, we had to listen to it twice. Yeah. 
because I was confused and I'm still confused and I'm like I'm talking like Mar Mar uh, Martel no, now. Yeah. You know, she told me her story and yeah. I'm kind of confused and you know she talked about cheating. Yeah. And so Tisha was like, so what's going on with the cheating thing? So you cheated on your ex-husband because she said that her and Louis both cheated well, she... in their relationship. So she was like, so you cheated on your husband, your ex-husband. And she was like, no, I cheated on him when we were in high school. She said, were y'all yeah. yeah. married in high school or like before y'all got married? She was like, before we got married. She was I like, that don't count. She said, that don't count. It don't count. <laughs> like, it counts for something. It counts for if something. We, if we're talking about marriage, what caused your marriage to break up, Yeah, we that, can't go back, back yeah. and pull that in. Yeah, that don't count. That don't get grandfathered in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, what? So then Tisha was like, hold on. So help me understand, like, what made you... Like, cheat back then. Then y'all got married, so it seemed like that may have been something that was a bearing on your marriage. Was he not enough for you? Did he not provide? Well, I don't want to talk about him because he's no longer here. I thought she was talking about Lewis. I was like, Lu that's what... You thought she no, was talking about Lewis? No, I know she was talking about... A, was that really? Yeah. I, we I, know Lewis alive? Yeah, but that's what <laughs> confused me because the whole time I was thinking she was talking about Lewis. Bold Stanley. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> that, that's how confused. That's how confused I was. But anyway, roll camera. <laughs> like, what? So yeah, I'm confused by you, error right now. Like, what? We don't. It, it, it don't matter. So basically, she talked like this. She talked around in circles. Yeah. She went around and around and around in circles, talking about cheating, but she didn't cheat in a marriage. But what made you? What made the marriage dissolve? I can't talk about, about it because he's no longer here. Tiffany, you are full of ish. Hmm. <laughs> and, and, and I ain't got time for it. And I don't care enough to even dig into it no more than what I what I already am. I, I can't. Yeah. So, at the end of the episode, we have Kimmy. Kimmy is walking up to this hotel. She's nicely dressed. She's serving everything that needs to be served. And she ends up in a room because Maurice gave her an address. With nothing more, nothing less. Just show up. So he did a picnic dinner for her in the hotel room. That joint was nicely set up too. It was. was I nice. like the little pepperoni, uh, the uh, little flower little pepperoni. Rose, I said, yeah. wait a minute. Uh -huh. That's cute. Anyway, so he got to talking to Kimmy about, you know, I had a meeting with Dr. Francis. And even Kimmy said, Dr. Francis is just everybody's uh -huh, man. Yeah. You know, you didn't put him on retainer. And he said, you know, he made me realize some things that, you know, I thought that Mark and Martell so long. Well, I, I heard it know, myself. You know. You know. Um, <laughs> that I need to dedicate more time to this relationship. Like, I've been spending way too much time working and not enough time <clears throat> spending time with you. And she was like, you know, at the end of the day, I got married for time. I got in this relationship for time. Right. I have everything that I need. But having and spending time with you is one of the drawing forces to our relationship. I actually like to be with you. Right. And you working all the time, that's my issue with it. So he ended up presenting her with their honeymoon. Yeah. And she was like, oh, two trips. And he was like, what you mean two trips? He was trips? like, I only bought one. He <laughs> said, Destiny. He was like, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> she, don't, she don't think she's coming on this trip, dude. She's like, no. But then Kimmy was like, we're going on a honeymoon and everybody, so everybody can come. I said, Destiny can come too? When is it, Kimmy? Because we might show up too. Yeah. When? Is it? When? Huh. <laughs> but she was like, it's a party. Like, we've been married now. We don't we don't buck as much as we're going to buck. And we don't got time in. It's time to party now. We're going to have a good right. time. I know that's right. Yes, indeed. So, they're going to go on their honeymoon or whatever. And that's pretty much how we kind of left it off. So next week is going to be the finale to the season. Yeah. I can't wait, but it's going to go, it's going to be a banger. You get, <laughs> listen, the Holtz is going to bring it like nobody can bring it. And I'm like, look, Marceau, uh, where is our chocolate in a bottle at, man? <laughs> yeah. This is the last time we're going to ask. After that, it's settled. <laughs> we don't even care no more. Look, you got our address there. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Let me <laughs> He never said that's what he was sending, but he asked why I dress up. Um, 
But anyway, y'all, y'all let us know what y'all think about this in the comments. We seriously want to know about your like financial yeah. thing and yeah, how, yeah, for how real, did for that real. conversation that Tisha and Marcel have about money, how did that affect, affect y'all? Yeah. Did you relate to it or it's like, I can't relate? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would like to hear it because I like to know y'all business. And on, the next, on that note, straight, straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two, two up, up, two, two down. down. Holla! Woo!